Now, I'm sure if I look closely enough, I will see the headquarters of the European Space Agency, which now says that a new revolution of space flight is underway. Recent high-profile missions, you had SpaceX rocket last week, you've got moon missions, you've got the US, India and Japan, and really you ask, well, where does Europe sit in all of this? With the European Space Agency, the head of it explained the space of the state of space travel today. I mean, we are at uh, quite a huge inflection point. Uh, we call it sometimes uh, a new renaissance of space or a revolution that is taking place. The first one, obviously, having been the the race to space between the U.S. and the, U the USSR at the time, uh, the race to the moon. Uh, today, we have a completely different uh, situation. We have, uh, first of all, many more space players. Uh, we have about 80 spacefaring nations. But the thing that is completely new today is the commercial sector. Is, is Elon Musk a help or a hindrance to global space? Uh, he's, first of all, it's quite fascinating what he's doing. It's really an inspiration. And uh, I think this is something that uh, the whole world has uh, taken on. It's not only in Europe, uh, it's in Japan, in China, everywhere, uh, and it's really great. On the other side, of course, as Europe, now I'm speaking as, uh, as Europe uh, compared to a uh, U.S. company, of course, Europe needs to make sure that we have our own capability, uh, which is in competition or which can compete with services offered there. Voila. All these flights, they are your strength and your weakness. These are all the countries, 22 member states uh, of the European Space Agency that we are managing and that uh, put their resources together to have major space programs. But we have a lot of flexibility built in our system because only 20% of our budget is because of a member state's uh, size of the economy, so it's a uh, basic country, what, what we call level of resources. The other 80% of our member state programs we do as optional programs. That means we propose a mission, let's say going to Mars with a rover, uh, we put it on the table and member states can or cannot contribute. Some put a lot of money in, some put no money in, but also... Yeah, but that's a la carte. It is a la carte. It is a la carte. I'll have a bit of Mars, but I won't... Oh, no, 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 no. I'll take the moon, but not Mars. Exactly, exactly. But It's not, not efficient. No, that is, no, no, that is good. Because if one country does not want to be on Mars, but on the moon, they can do so through ESA. That's very powerful. I realise the ISS... Uh, and the relationship with Russia is already embedded in treaty. And though we put that to one side, can you imagine in the near, in, in the, in the near future, 5, 10, 15 years, that you can work again with Russia? Well, this is not for me to decide, because this is something that uh, certainly is decided on geopolitical level. Um, uh, I mentioned another example. We have been um, encouraged by our politicians to work with Russia 20 years ago, and we have done so. Uh, now, of course, with the uh, war uh, in Ukraine, our politicians, that means the member states of, of ESA, have uh, imposed very heavy sanctions uh, mm -hmm. on Russia, and these sanctions may make it simply impossible to work with Russia uh, in anything but the space station. And this is what ESA is doing. We are defining our programs, aligning our priorities and programs according to the political priorities of uh, our countries uh, collectively. You spend your entire life on space. And if Jeff Bezos says, Doctor, here's your free ticket, and the EC allowed you to, or the old regulator, would you take it? Myself? Yes. I would uh, go to space if I have a job to do. That means if I do some meaningful work, some experiments, uh, some research. You not, don't? Not, not as a tourist. Why not? Because I want to. I mean, I want to work. You have spent your entire professional life. Your PhD. What was your PhD in? On um, space. I guess it's this idea of space. What's the attraction for you? I mean, space is fascinating. Uh, can you imagine? Uh, uh, first, uh, uh, everyone is asking very fundamental questions. Where do I come from? Where do I go? Actually. You're Actually, this happened when I was a kid of seven years, when uh, Neil Armstrong was setting foot on the moon. And uh, my parents said, look, there's somebody flying to the moon. And I said, this is impossible. How can somebody, as a seven-year-old, how can somebody fly to the moon? How does it work? This is just so fascinating. 
And this is something that keeps driving me for the rest of my life.